Hello everyone, Don the Crown here, and today I want to talk about the upcoming Diablo 4 Season 4 theme. Now I saw this post here by Diablo4.life, where they're thinking that's probably going to be a season of the werewolf. I mean, season two was made by the same people as season four. Vampires and werewolves kind of go together, and they found this little badge here for the season, and this little minimap icon as well. But as some people pointed out, and they actually updated here, that this is very similar to the Iron Wolves emblem, which is a faction that is pretty common in the Diablo mythos. And I believe we're involved with them in like basically every single game. And these guys kind of operate out of Kazakhstan. And uh, I really think that this is going to be the Iron Wolf season, not just because of this particular thing, but because I've managed to go through the data mine here given to me by Lothric, the same guy that made the OG character creator for Diablo 4. And he kind of created this gigantic data mine of all of the stuff here on the PTR, but I'm not necessarily gonna go through all of it. And I've gone through and picked out some uh, juicy spots for us to uh, go through real quick. And I have notes as well. So starting off, Internally, it looks like they're calling it the Season of Loot Reborn. It could actually be the Season of Loot Reborn. This is going to be a season where they're going to be like having brand new itemization uh, from the kind of the top to the bottom of the game, and it's going to be brand new loot. And so this is going to be pretty cool. I'm very excited about the new crafting stuff. But if we look here in the achievements and feats, we see complete every journey objective in the Season of Loot Reborn. And this is Sude, the Anvil's staunchest ally. And so uh, I believe that Sude, the Anvil, is probably going to be our new seasonal NPC. Normally, an achievement like this in the database goes along with whatever the new NPC is. So like the Vampire Hunter in Season 2 that we help work with. In Season 3, there is uh, Azuzan, the guy that helps us open up all the vaults. And so this will be Sude, the Anvil's time to help us out. And there'll be a new reputation system similar to season two. Once again, stuff from season two is kind of coming into season four, the Wolves Honor. Now, if you're actually playing the PTR right now and you're doing any of the events or killing the boss there, you might have noticed a little like pop up as you kill it for Wolves Honor reputation going up. And this is why is because uh, there will be a season two like system for this. And in the information here I found, it says increasing your wolf's honor within Helltide provides many kinds of rewards, including equipment, materials, and temper manuals. So I believe this is how they're going, we're going to unlock our first temper manuals. You're not going to be able to temper your gear right away. Probably won't even be able to do it until like maybe World Tier 3 maybe. And so uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different experience with gear than it has been in the past, especially because rare gear is only going to have two modifiers as opposed to three. Uh, so gear will probably feel a little bit slimmer earlier on until you start tempering for sure. Now, uh, other things that I found in the database here is during the season of Loot or Born, you may find rare seasonal elixirs. These offer powerful effects to hasten progress but will expire at the end of the season. I believe these are going to be like massive XP style elixirs. I haven't found these necessarily yet, but uh, definitely increase your overall experience gain in this season. And I think that's going to be good because getting to level 100 can kind of be a little bit of a slog. They're already increasing all the experience by like 50% baseline uh, for all the levels. So it'll be like from 200% bonus at world tier four to 250. But I think getting to level 100 so you can deal with the new uber bosses, the new pit end game grind, and just like working on master working up your gear, it's going to be a lot better to get to that end game than before, which I think is a really good change. Now, one big mechanic in this particular season is the profane mine cages. And so starting World Tier 3 Nightmare, you can find profane mine cages in Helltide. Using one will increase both the monster level and rewards, but only within Helltide and during the season of Loot Reborn. And what exactly they'll do is they last for 60 minutes, kind of like an elixir, and increases your Helltide monster level by 10, which also increases the aberrant cinder drop rate and threat gain. Now, monsters in World Tier 1 and 2 are capped at level 50, but I believe that normally Helltide monsters are like 3 or 4 levels above you. It's going to make them 13 or 14 levels up, which means that uh, Helltide is going to be pretty darn rippy and uh, pretty difficult if you're using this mine cage. Now, note, it's only for you 
And similar to how like zones will scale based on your level. So if I'm like in world tier four and I'm like level 70, monsters are going to be like 73. But if I'm with my friend who's level 100, to him, monsters will act as if they're level 103. This will only affect your personal experience. So you don't have to worry about somebody else using a mine cage near you if you don't want to use it. But this will also increase your threat gain. If you're not familiar with it already, I've already done a video talking about the Helltide. Uh, and it basically is a like GTA wanted system where as you kill monsters and as you go through and open up boxes and complete events, demon more and more and more demons are going to start spawning around you just kind of randomly. And once you fill your meter out all of the way, it starts to go down. And if you can survive the onslaught of demons that come at you uh, all the way until it goes all the way down, a Hellborn will pop out, which is kind of like a uh, kind of like a rogue exile style character is like similar to like a player character, but empowered by hell. And they're pretty tanky and they do quite a bit of damage. I can imagine with the mind cage, they're going to be even uh more difficult to kill, but they can give you stuff like boss summoning materials. They've gotten a whole bunch of like blood for Zir or nightmare juice for beast and ice. And so uh, these are pretty good, I think, and be pretty fun. And the real crazy thing is if you're with a friend and their meter is going down and your meter is still going up, killing their monsters helps your meter go up and vice versa. And like eventually they will be done and your meter will probably cap out and <laughs> yeah, it can kind of lead to a uh, lots of monster spawning. In fact, we've had times where like in the PTR has been four or five people near each other and the uh, just nonstop spawning of enemies just is insane. It's like an event is going off. Two events are going off at the exact same time on top of each other. Just tons of elites. Maybe they'll tone this down for launch a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised, but it is quite a bit of fun. Uh, yeah, so very much looking forward to that. And you're going to, it's going to be very difficult to survive in Helltide. And speaking of surviving, in Hardcore, there's going to be some big changes to how they're dealing with death in the game. So Elixir of Death Evasion and Curative Elixir are both gone. Just completely removed from the game. You're not going to have to worry about them anymore. If you try to use one, it will just be turning into Elixir materials. They're just completely removed. Also, Sorceresses no longer have their like kind of cheat death flame shield enchantment and so hardcore is definitely going to be a lot more hardcore from here on out which i think is a good change now to talk more about the actual seasonal mechanic let's talk about some of the quests that have been able to data mine out it looks like we're going to start the season four quest line with this start medallion this is a brightly colored metal scrap that looks like a part of an amulet torn to shreds by some inhuman force and it's titled medallion shard I believe we're going to be taking this over to Sude the Anvil to help repair it and bring it back up to uh, its former glory. Because later on in the quest line here, we get Helltide Reputation Cash Endgame Amulet. And it contains the shattered medallion you delivered to Sude, expertly reassembled and burnished to gleaming. It says Iron Wolves Amulet Case. So I'm kind of thinking that there might be some sort of mechanic around this amulet. We're going to maybe like socket gems or malignant hearts or something similar to that into this amulet for like upgrading our character and getting more player power. But I haven't been able to find anything in the PTR just yet. It's probably not in there yet, but I think this would be potentially pretty interesting. Even if the only things they're really adding are updating Helltide and updating all the itemization, I think it's going to be a great season because uh, yeah, Helltide is actually pretty fun right now. And the itemization changes have been duly needed for a long time. Now, some other things I found as well is there a little thing that helps you change down some of your materials for masterworking. Right now, masterworking in the PTR is a little bit annoying because there's 12 ranks of masterworking, which is similar to the old blacksmithing upgrading system. But uh, for the first four ranks, you kind of need the normal materials. The second four ranks need the rare materials and the last four ranks need the legendary materials. But the normal materials only drop from levels one through 20 of the pit. And then the rare materials only drop from 21 to 40. So if you're doing like pit level 100 or something, 
you would have to backtrack down to like level 20 to get yourself your normal materials. You have to do a few of them to get enough to level up one piece. And then you'd have to do a few level 40s to get enough to level up your piece to level eight before you can start doing the legendary stuff. And this looks like they're going to allow you to kind of trade down, which I think is a really, really good change. So you can just blast however you want. Now, last but not least, I did find at the very end of the data mine, potentially an update to the Oculus wand, which I'm a huge fan of. This is the wand that gives you teleport for free, but your teleport now, or gives you the teleport enchantment, which makes your evade teleport. But whenever you teleport, it just goes some random place from an evade. Uh, instead, it's going to change to gain the teleport enchant for free. Evading triggers a random defensive skill not on your action bar and applies a 10 second cooldown to it, which if this is going to be the change for the Oculus, I'm super excited about this because this basically makes you able to use the Oculus without having the I think, metamorphosis aspect active to prevent the random teleportation, which pretty much was required and was really fun in season two. I'm hoping that we can potentially now make a teleport focus build because I have an Oculus in the PTR that has a greater aspect on the ranks of teleport. So it has 15 ranks of teleport just baseline without any master working at all. And so it could probably go up maybe even to 20 or higher. Uh, so you're looking at like maybe like a level 30 plus teleport. That seems like that would do a little bit of damage. And there's aspects that you can temper on to give you teleport cooldown reduction. So this could be potentially pretty neat. Hopefully this video enlightened you a little bit about what potentially is coming up. Like I said, this is all the data mine stuff. So maybe some of this will be wrong. Who knows? But I'm definitely pretty excited. If you want to see more Diablo 4 content, subscribe and maybe come by the stream. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.